know that uh, Jeff got shaken up a little bit in the game Saturday. Just, I mean, I'm assuming he's fine. Is that the yeah, game? he's absolutely fine. He got to catch the ball. He actually got minus on the play. You know, they had on, he got to make the play. You know, bottom line is they did a pretty good job of rotating their safeties where they, you know, to stop the play. And you know, we got to make that play on, you know, those are the big plays that just get a quarterback on a roll. And so, you know, I talk to our guys about it all the time. Our job is to make our quarterback play really well. So uh, make that play. You guys are well past halfway through the season. Do you do you kind of relish the fact that you can find out a little bit more about your team playing against a high-caliber opponent? There's no question. You know, the, the thing is, when you come to Ohio State University, is there any reason why you don't want to play in these kind of games, right? I mean, you sign up for this, and this is what it's all about, you know, national TV, prime time, and all that kind of stuff, and getting an opportunity to play a great opponent and, and a Big Ten opponent, and all those things are exactly why you signed up to come to Ohio State. Let's go. And I know our kids are really excited. I know they're, they're going to spend an awful lot of time in the film room themselves this week, and, and this is really, really what defines a season are these kind of games, obviously, um, because you you got to go play well on the road. It's a tough environment. It's a, you know, a, it, it's a uh, unique locker room setting and all those things. So you got to go in and, you know, kind of keep yourself focused and let's go play a great game against a great opponent. But do you have nagging questions that will be answered most likely Saturday night? I don't know in my case if they're nagging. I, I think the one thing that a coach's perspective is a little different I think, than from the outside is we see it every day. And so you, you know where some of the strengths are. And, and there isn't a football team in America that doesn't have weaknesses. And you know where those weaknesses are. And so you look at it you say, okay, I know what we're capable of doing. And sometimes to the public, you, you know, you may not get it exactly the way you want it on that game day. You got to give them credit too, you know. Sometimes, and you know, we always laugh because we walk in and you say, "Okay, this is what they're going to do this week." Well, when's that ever happened to us? You know, maybe there's some weeks there's carryover. When we go to play them, it's not the same defense or the same style. And give you a great example, you know, we ran a kind of couple counters early in the game. Well, they had played their defensive ends one certain way every game this year. Against us, they changed those defensive ends, so those counters really weren't very good plays in the end so you know but we ran them because of what they did so we get a lot of that so the question is what what is next and, and what are we really expecting next and so w when you you know if we get a team that we can line up with and I, I you know really kind of get an idea where those you know where those birds are I think we're okay uh, and I know there's a lot of great players and you know JT will be even a little more healthy this year this week you know based on that injury and and everything about the game is if you're, we're going to live up, and this football team is going to play very well. And uh, I, I don't know if I need any more answers to just go execute what I know we can do. Tim, as a, as a position coach on the offensive side of the ball, do you look at this offense and is it, in some ways, is it more complete than it was a year ago? Boy, that's a great question. You know, the, the one thing about this offense is, you know, and, and we had a little bit of a, I, I don't know what the word was, you know, the, a couple of, Bad things happened to us, you know, at Penn State a couple of weeks ago and kind of got in that law, then we ended up picking it up in the, in the overtime. But, you know, when you look at this offense, the thing that just keeps telling me over and over and over again, who do you stop? I mean, you know, you look at it, you, the word complete in my mind comes really into the picture because our X receivers are making plays, our Z receivers are making plays, our tight ends have had some plays down the field. You know, against uh, Maryland, we had two vertical throws and catches against them, and, and we had one, I, I think, also against Rutgers. And then you look at the running backs and they're catching the ball, you know, they're catching the ball in passes, they're running screen plays, they're, they're getting the ball in certain runs, we're being, being able to perimeter run. We've had some nice north and south runs. So when you look at it, it's a very complete offense. And I always wonder, I said, what do you really walk in, say, okay, I got to take this person away or that play away because we are very versatile in what we do. And, and sometimes, you know, when you have those little laws in the games, mostly it's because you're playing the checker game. You know, there's that little adjustment. Now the checkers are moving, right? And can we get the checkers to line up the way we want them to line up to, to make the plays that we want? And, and that's really where it is. I mean, you know, we're obviously, obviously in that position sometimes during the game. We gotta, they're going to make us make the adjustments. But I, I really like what we're doing. That You can obviously sense, um, you know, the staff's been together for three years on the offensive side of the ball. There's a lot of things that, 
is already happening in motion before the thought comes up and being verbalized, you know, that that uh, you can see that we can make adjustments pretty quickly in a game. And, and that part of it's really good. So that, to me, it's very versatile because it can hit you and attack you in a lot of different ways. The other thing I wanted to ask you, what's Urban like to work for in a week like this? Like this one? These are the good weeks, to be real honest with you. Because you know what? Everybody knows what the price is. What really, man, and I, as a head coach, he has a job to do. It's the weeks where would you be complacent are the worst weeks to work for any head coach. You know, because what happens is he, he's not allowing complacency. So weeks like this, are you kidding me? It's all business and here we go. And But you know everyone's really focused from, from the manager up. We, everybody knows what's at stake, and everybody op you know loves the opportunity to go up there and compete. I mean, really looking forward to it. I mean, we're all wired to go do this, right? I mean, this is what it's all about. Let's go, let's go play. Yeah, Tim. Well, that said, last last year I was asking Urban what what gave you guys problems uh, defensively from them. Uh, obviously, that fourth and two play, Jeff and Danico Allen didn't quite match up and stuff. How, much, how often do you bring those things up this week or show? Yo, I'll tell you, if I show it too many times to Jeff, he'll jump off a building, so I'm not going to show him that play very often. It took me a week to bring him back down to earth after that game. I can tell you that one. Here's the thing. You know, you, you look at it and you look at it, and defensively, um, when you look at what they're going to try to do, um, the one thing about Michigan State over the last several years, they don't change much. They are who they are. What they do is they know their defense extremely well, there's little intricacies in, in that play, for example. You know, they went double rifle blitz, so they hadn't ran it all time, all game long. That was the only snap of that in that game, which, you know, obviously, you no, know, we practiced against it. And, and the doggone blitzer didn't blitz the, what he had really shown in practice. I mean, you know, we've shown him in practice in other games. Because I think the blitzer made a mistake, to be very honest with you. And then all of a sudden he recovered, and Jeff wasn't able to recover with him, right? So, so you look at it, and you say, and that's how fine line it is when you play a team like Michigan State. Because they're going to, I'm going to give you all a really insight. They're going to run up and play four three quarters, and they're going to press the number one receivers, right? I mean, what week haven't they done that in? In their entire last nine years or ten years, however they've been at Michigan State, that's what they're going to do. Uh, the thing is, is there's a lot of little integral battles going on about how they're going to play their front, what's you know how they're going to line up, and where they're getting their rotations in their secondary to get run fits and those things. That's where the battles will come in, and that's what makes it all fun. That's just the strategical part that you absolutely love, and and uh, we're looking forward to that challenge. As an offensive staff, though, do y'all. Do y'all look forward to another shot? You know what I mean? I mean, y'all got them up there. You mean like when you lose a game, you look forward to playing another opponent? I, I don't <laughs> – I mean, that, at them? At them, at Narduzzi. At at, that yeah, you know what? I, I think absolutely we're all competitive. You know what I mean? I, I, I grew up the youngest of five boys. Whenever I lost one of my brothers in a game, I was going to go out and play. Let's go play another one. You know what I mean? So I think we all have that in us. And, and, you know, we do know the challenge, Joe. I mean, it's a good football team. And, and they're a well-coached football team. And they know their stuff very well. Again, it's a staff that's been together for a long, long time, and and uh, they they know their system. Uh, you know, they know what they're going to do, and uh, you know, our job is to execute a game plan really flawlessly. Oh, left up. Tim, you obviously yeah. know Mark D'Antonio. What do you remember about when he chose to leave Cincinnati to go to Michigan State? What do you think of the program he's built there? You know, in reality, I was in a car with the suitcases in a car driving towards an airport, and, and then I called Mark and said, Mark, I can't go. I'm going to stay at Cincinnati. So I was supposed to have gone with him. So I don't know Mark very, very well. Um, the thing that's really interesting about the, with Mark and that group, the, the, they, are, they have a unique way of saying, okay, I'm going to put the chip on my shoulder some way. There's going to be something come out of this press conference. I'm going to guarantee you they're going to put on a bulletin board somehow, some way the world's against them. I mean, they do. that's been their MO since the day I've known them, uh, and, and they're going to do a great job of playing that out. Uh, Mark is, is a phenomenal coach. They're really good people. And, and you know, the, the bottom line is that they're going to have an element of toughness, and they, which they bring to the day. Um, they're not afraid to uh, surprise you with some things that if you haven't seen. And, you know, and, and obviously, um, you know, whether it's a fake pun, a fake field goal, or one of those things, they're not afraid to bring that out and, and expose it to you. Um, and, and, you know, they're going to – those kids have been in some really big games lately. And, and I mean, some really big games. And, and they don't uh, – you know, they don't back down. 
So I, I think, and Mark does a great job of preparing him to play in those kind of games. So I look forward to the challenge. Obviously, you know, he's a long time and will be a lifetime friend. And, and uh, you know, the bottom line is it's, you know, it's time to go play the Spartans, though. Having worked for both of them, what's the difference between Mark and Irving? Oh, my gosh, it would take a long time to talk about that difference. It only because there are, everybody is different, you know, and I've had, you know, the unique pleasure of working for a few different people and, you know, with Mark Antonio and Brian Kelly and, and, and uh, you know, Urban Meyer here in the last 10, 11 years. And, you know, they're each unique in their own way and each are great coaches and special people and they all know how to do their job very well. And uh, I, it would take a long time probably to sit down and explain all those. You have, you have the luxury of having two good veteran tight ends with Jeff Hireman and Nick Van Nett. If something would happen to those guys, how close is Marcus Ball being able to hold the fort down there for you guys? You know, I got he's really made strides. You know, he started on two special teams on Saturday. Uh, very pleased with his results on those special teams. And, and you know, he's made a lot of strides. He got like, I don't know, eight or nine plays in the game Saturday. And he didn't grade out, you know, as well as I'd like for him to. But, you know, that's part of the learning and experience. And, and uh, I, I got it. He... There's really an improvement in him. I mean, he's, his off-the-field stuff has been fantastic. His on-the-field stuff is improving. You know, he got to the point where, uh, you know, I, you guys all know by the media, is Coach Meyer is pretty particular who, about who he runs down on kickoff. And he was the starting number three on kickoff, which is, you know, a phenomenal thing for us. So, um, you know, for, it, it, was a, it was a great challenge for him, and I'm glad he got an opportunity to do that. Sam Hubbard, do you think his future is at tight end? And do you have some arguments with Coach Johnson, like some fights? Well, there's going to be a lot of arguments over great players. Uh, the bottom line is whatever's going to be best for the team in the end, that's where he'll be um, because he is a he's a great young man, um, works at the game really hard, will, will dedicate his life to being a great Ohio State Buckeye. And uh, where that all ends up, I don't know. But I do know this, uh, there will always be a fight for a good player. Does he rep with you guys or does he work with the – Defensive ends. Predominantly right now, he's more we're going with the defensive lineman. Yeah. But we, we spot him wherever we need him in practice. Because scout teams, you know, I don't think sometimes that gets lost in the, in the message. Is it, scout teams this time of year are absolutely huge. You know, and how well they perform against you is really how well you're going to play on Saturday. So we put him where we need him to get the job done.